Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and Moon Knight Episode 3 took us to Egypt and upped its illusion game from suggesting a third hidden altar more willing to take a stab at stabbing and Khonshu warping the star map to confuse us all like that sleep demon who moves the tack gum glow-in-the-dark stars in my bedroom ceiling. He goes by another name. But it's not that messiah I'm discussing today, but another already confirmed MCU villain who I speculated might tie into this Moon Knight series and uh, actually, in an easter egg you might have missed in episode 3, finally showed his face! Folks, Pharaoh Ramatut, aka Kang the Conqueror, 100% appeared in episode 3 of Moon Knight and we were all too busy staring directly at solar eclipses to notice. I mean seriously, Artie, why were you looking directly at it? Did you learn astronomy from the same tutor who taught you Mandarin? Hey, a reminder that the best way to support new rock stars is to check out our wickedly sweet Moon Knight shirt. Tomb of the Moon God, limited supply, and running out fast over at NewRockStarsMerch.com. So, Moon Knight Episode 3 opens with Mark Spector in Egypt attempting to track down Arthur Harrow and his dig crew, chasing down a contact who ends up getting killed by these three thugs. The guy credited as Young Thug is the last of them standing after Mark gets knocked in the head a few times and blacks out, waking up having just stabbed the other two, a move that Steven claims he did not do, implying there was a third altar like Jake Lockley who might have crossed that line. And Mark, while a deadly mercenary willing to to take a life in self-defense, even pulled a punch against this kid and opted to give him the treatment you give someone after they made a G.I. Jane joke. <laughs> oh, wow! But Mark even later pushes back on Khonshu to try to spare this kid's life. Take him to the ledge. He's just a kid. He'll talk. But the only thing this kid talks about is how he is drinking that same Ahmet Kool-Aid. Praise Ahmet. Boom, you looking for Amit? Too bad, better move the moon. But here, my friends, is where our Easter egg is hidden. Because on the back of that jean jacket worn by that young thug is art of a pharaoh head with a specifically shaped headpiece and splashes of the colors teal and purple. Those are, of course, the colors of Kang the Conqueror in his pharaoh Ramatut form. And the headpiece is designed directly from Mike Del Mundo's art of pharaoh Ramatut from Avengers Volume 7, number 4 in 2017, part of the Kang War storyline. The only thing missing from this art, cryptically, is Kang's actual face. It's a blank space, a void. Which also tells us something because Kang, through his countless variants, takes on many faces. And to all the skeptics out there, I hear ya! Especially you geniuses at work who share our video thumbnails on Twitter and Reddit clearly without watching the videos. You may say this is just another case of me pointing to random comic panels to compare Disney Plus series episodes and make mountains out of molehills, but I, 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 I can confirm that we have been in contact with crew members from Moon Knight who verified that this was an intentional Kang Pharaoh Ramatut Easter egg on the jacket. People, this is real. This is legit. And I am losing it. Because I began speculating as early as episode one that Amit's mystery first avatar, the one who Hero claimed betrayed Amit, the one whom she had given that crocodile head staff with a shred of her power now carried by Hero, that traitor could have been Pharaoh Ramatut, based on the fact that the Kang variant he who remains keeps variant versions of the Pyramids of Giza and the Sphinx as collections in his void a nod to Kang keeping Wonders of the World as trophies in his kingdom Chronopolis in the comics, and using the Sphinx as his initial time machine vehicle that he used to travel back to ancient Egypt to begin with. And really, whoever betrayed Amit must have been some Promethean figure with a level of cunning beyond your average ancient Egyptian, perhaps a scientist and a time lord from the 31st century. And philosophically, both he and Amit apply the same principle of judging people by their predestined fates before they really do anything wrong. Remember, in Loki episode 6, he remains did hint at having a history taking several alternate forms. I've been dubbed many names by many people. A ruler, a conqueror, he who remains, a jerk. But it's, it's not as simple as a name. And to me, the likeliest ruler in MCU past that he remains could have been referring to there, based on his acquisition of those pyramids in the Sphinx, was an ancient Egyptian pharaoh. And now this jacket proves that not only does Pharaoh Ramatut exist in MCU past, but maybe also since this kid was an Amit worshiper, that there could have been some link between Ramatut and Amit beyond their philosophical approaches to justice. But hey, imagine this scenario. You got a big date or an important job interview, or you're about to be in front of millions of people watching you on YouTube, but wait a second. And what's that? A huge zit? Who invited that to the party? Well, today's sponsor, Frontman, is here to help you disinvite your unwelcome acne guest. So, Frontman Fade is a skin colored cream with proven acne fighting ingredients. It covers acne while treating it. It's dermatologist developed and made with natural extracts. 
<laughs> oh, 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 what greasy spot? Look, you'll be looking better in literally 10 seconds. Frontman fade won't clog your pores and it's sweat proof, which is good for me because some of my videos can get pretty intense. It's like I'm running a 10K through these miserable details. <laughs> Am I right? So grab yourself some frontman fade to cover your acne while treating it. Head to befrontman.com slash new rockstars or use the link in the description for 15% off your order. But I will say we have not got confirmation that Pharaoh Rama Tut was on its first avatar per se. And indeed, the translations on the hieroglyphics on that scarab quote a line from the Book of the Dead and insert the name Amenhotep as if the scarab could have been commissioned by one of the three pharaohs named Amenhotep, either the first, the second, or the third, and that one of them could have been Amit's avatar, and there are plenty of other people linked with Egyptian history in the ancient world who could have played that role. So whether or not Ramatut, aka Kang, was Amit's avatar, this sighting here confirms that Ramatut was at least a presence in Egyptian history in the MCU, and that the Moon Knight team is very aware of this shared history. Now, it is interesting to note that something spooked the Egyptian gods. We have not abandoned humanity. They abandoned us. We decided long ago we did not wish to meddle in the affairs of man. Yes, unlike the Eternals, who continue to walk the Earth to meddle in small ways, you know, like keeping fossils from crushing kids during earthquakes, these gods spend almost all of their time in what Khonshu calls the Overvoid, an otherworldly astral realm from the Marvel comics, originally called the Celestial Heliopolis from the Thor comics. Meanwhile, the background of their chamber in the pyramid, seen on either sides of the entrance that Mark arrives through, are dozens of small Ushapti lined up, suggesting that, as they did with Amit, and now they're doing a Khonshu, these five members of the Indian had encased countless other Egyptian deities in stone. Why? Well, let's not forget, they are down to five. And in Egyptian mythology, the Ennead has nine members. Atom, Shu, Tefnut, Geb, Nut, Osiris, Isis, Set, and Nephthys. And sometimes includes a tenth member, Horus. We talked about this lineup with the poster in episode one, which Steven even points out, shows only seven members. And we pointed out excludes some of the main ones, but includes Horus as well as Hathor. We meet Hathor and her avatar Yatsil in episode three, but Hathor is now never ranked in Egyptian mythology as a member of the Ennead. So basically, it looks like six of the nine Ennead's original members were removed, Horus was promoted, and then they invited Hathor, so I guess they'd have five. Because really, yeah, every panel of judges needs an odd number so that there's a tie-breaking vote. But then, most of the other gods were purged into stone, while these five just peace out at the Overvoid. So what happened? Well, I think that abandonment that Horus's avatar referred to was one human who made them obsolete. The way all human enlightenment and science is a threat to superstition and religion. So someone who unlocked the secrets of technology so advanced it rendered his science inseparable from magic. The kind of science equals magic fusion that only the Asgardian gods had reached. That man being a self-described jerk from the future who lorded over this historical era to collect trophies for his case. And now we have physical evidence that that human being was a ruler named Pharaoh Ramatut, a person who goes by many names, and we know him best. As Kang. Hey, a reminder to check out our Moon Knight inspired merch over at NewRockStarsMerch.com. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at EA Boss. Follow New Rockstars. Subscribe to New Rockstars for more analysis of everything you love. Thanks for watching. Bye.